Jim, and uh, thank you everyone for joining us uh, for another exciting installment of the FM Academy uh, 12 Days of uh, FileMaker 12 series, which was extended to 15 days uh, by popular demand. This is the last of the scheduled uh, 15 uh, webinar series, so this is number 15 on our list. Uh, after that, we will be wrapping up and resuming our regular monthly webinar series. Uh, we're sort of back to uh, business as usual at FM Academy. Uh, but today we have uh, a, uh, a speaker who's going to uh, talk to us about the accessibility improvements in FileMaker 12, uh, Chad Saker, who is a developer here at IT Solutions in, uh, in Philadelphia. Uh, he, is, uh, he is originally from uh, the great state of Texas, uh, joined us in uh, 2006. Uh, and does uh, uh, iOS development uh, for uh, mobile devices, does SQL Server at .NET, as well as uh, FileMaker Pro development. Uh, and uh, without further ado, I will, have, uh, I will have Chad introduce you to the accessibility features in FileMaker 12. Hello. Thank you for joining. Um, just a little bit about FM Academy. We're a group of uh, FileMaker consultants that get together to um, to do webinars, uh, education on FileMaker. Um, and Mark already went over this stuff, uh, but I'm FileMaker developer. I've been working in it almost 10 years now, um, certified 8, 9, 10, and 11. Um, and as he said, I've been with IT Solutions since 2006, do some iPhone, uh, .NET, and SQL Server development as well. Um, so let's. Uh, Accessibility, it, most of you probably already know what this is. A lot of people won't. Um, it's it either it's just something that you either need or you don't. Um, but there might be a situation where uh, you may need it but don't realize that it's available to use. Um, so just sort of plain and simple, it is for uh, in, in our case, it's specifically for people who are visually impaired. There are other forms of accessibility um, for uh, hard of hearing and uh, those types of things. But uh, FileMaker's uh, new features focus on um, uh, uh, visual impairment. Uh, so for the blind or visually impaired, um, it's the primary way that people interact with their computers. Um, it's the accessibility software is actually a suite of tools that are built natively into the operating systems, uh, but other uh, software can plug into that and take advantage of it. Um, there's a certain amount of built-in functionality for screen readers out of the box um, for, say, in Windows 7, uh, OS 10, iOS, but it takes the developer of a specific application to um, to customize this to actually uh, make it a little bit more useful. The out-of-the-box functionality is very generic and will uh, just read text that's available on screen. But as a developer, you can give additional hints and guidance to users who can't see all the visual cues on the, on the screen that we usually take for granted. Um, so the screen readers are, are built in and it's uh, on OS 10 and iOS. It is called VoiceOver. And in Windows, it is called Narrator. And it's under uh, the control panel, ease of access uh, on Windows. And then under OS 10, it's under system preferences, universal access. And on OS 10, it's under settings, general, and accessibility. Um, so pretty much is you flip a switch and it starts reading uh, any any objects on the on the screen that a user can interact with um, something to keep in mind about visual impairment it is not just uh, people who have no sight there's a, a spectrum of people who um, have no sight at all and also have difficulty seeing so uh, keep that in mind when building layouts uh, it's, it's not just a matter of putting text in uh, so that it can be read by the screen readers. It's also very helpful to design your layouts in a way that um, help those users that have a limited sight. Um, so in general, uh, make elements larger, use high contrast fonts, uh, and large fonts. So 
So when designing those layouts on a case-by-case -case basis, it's really up to you whether you want a separate layout that is designed specifically for uh, people with visual impairments, or if you want to integrate uh, the accessibility text and uh, whatnot into your standard user interfaces. There are advantages to both. Um, it, it's definitely more work to, to maintain multiple separate layouts for the same functionality, but it also is a significant departure from, our, uh, from a typical uh, workflow. You can take advantage of, um, of things uh, in terms of designing a specific interface for those with visual impairments. And a good, a good example is that we often take and design specific layouts for iPhones and iPads. Um, there are certain things that are easier in that form factor and uh, method of interaction. It's just a fundamentally different way of interacting with the computer than it is with a mouse and keyboard. And so the same goes for users with visual impairments. They use computers in a very different way. Um, and it's often much more difficult and tedious. Um, and if you design sp something that's specifically for them and takes that into consideration, it may be a much better experience for them. Um, so there's not there's not really any easy way around it. You you have to you have to weigh whether or not it's of benefit to keep keep your layouts as one, or if you uh, split them off uh, and to make separate. Um, so one question um, is why would you need to add accessibility? You might, you might work for a small company. You know all the users. You know that all of them have um, good eyesight, um, are able to use the screen. Um, well, the most obvious answer is that for federal agencies that it's actually required by law to um, for them to use software if you are if you are selling uh, software as a vendor or if you are an in-house develop, developer for a federal agency, you actually have to do this. Um, and it's, uh, there, there are varying levels of compliance, but uh, the, the basic concept is that you have to make any uh, kind of text element on screen readable. Uh, and also accessible via some sort of other method of interaction uh, instead of just the mouse, so perhaps keyboard um, shortcuts to, to get access to all those elements. Um, so, and actually there, there are about one in 1,200 people in the U.S. are visually impaired, so if, um, if you are not working in a situation right now, if where you have users who are visually impaired, it's it's not uh, it's not all that uncommon for somebody to have some form of visual impairment. So, a uh, little prep work now can can save you some hassle later down the road and get some people up to speed. If you have if you are selling a product or if you have an in-house product, it it won't take very long to uh, get those up and running. Um, and uh, obviously for for people who are have limited sight or have no sight, it's it makes a world of difference to customize uh, your application this way for them. Um, and it can often make things unusable, and I don't mean unusable like this. It's a little bit closer to this, uh, without any um, without anybody accessibility any accessibility text or hints for how to interact with your application, uh, you might as well be staring at a blank screen without any kind of um, help and clicking and hoping that something non-destructive happens and uh, that you don't uh, delete something that you don't want to, um, and hope, hoping you don't get stuck as well. Um, so it is a little extra work, uh, but with uh, the new functionality in FileMaker 12, it's, it's fairly simple and straightforward to uh, to make that happen. Um, so in um, under the view menu, there is now a new accessibility inspector uh, option. So you pull down from the menu um, and you get this new window. It's sort of, um, 
it's sort of similar to the, the inspector uh, that you would normally interact with layout elements with, but it's actually a separate uh, widget. Um, and I'll, I'll show you in a moment in a quick demo. Uh, but you have three options. You have a label, title, and help. Um, and aside from that, that's, uh, that there's not a lot to it, so you can you can actually go through a whole layout in about 10 minutes, probably give everything that needs to uh, have some kind of hint um, of value. Uh, labels are specifically for fields, where um, if you have a field and a label that's associated with it, you can actually link the two, so that uh, automatically the title for uh, the text uses the uh, the text in the label. So when the when the screen reader is reading, um, when you enter uh, the cursor into a field, it will enter, it will read that this is a text field, it's it's the first name field, for example. Um, and then it will read any text if it exists in the field. Um, so the advantage here is that if you change a label, the, the accessibility uh, text is also updated, so it's very easy to maintain if you if you just associate the, the field with the label. And uh, if you use the label, you can usually leave the title blank. So the title serves the same function as the label. Uh, the title would be in a case where you need some kind of custom text that isn't on the, on the label. And um, you can also enter calculated results in the title. So the label, the label widget only uh, reads what is that exactly on the label. Uh, the title would be a situation where you can um, you can put any kind of scripted dynamic, uh, not scripted, sorry, calculated dynamic text, uh, so that depending on context, it will change. Um, the disadvantage there is that you may have to, it may be more difficult to maintain long term uh, if you have uh, a lot of custom text here. And like I said before, the label and the title cover the same ground, so typically you don't, don't want to do both. Uh, you can do both, and keep in mind that it will read the title, uh, the label first. Uh, just make sure you don't use the same exact text. Uh, if you're not adding anything by having both, uh, it's better just to, to leave them blank. And then the help, help text is uh, read a little bit after the title. Uh, in OS 10, it's read a few seconds after. So if you enter into the key, uh, into a field, it will read uh, the title and the contents of the field. And then after three or five seconds, it will actually read the help to give the user a little bit more instruction. So this would be sort of akin to tooltips. You would put any additional information that it would not be immediately obvious to a user. Um, so if you have a notes field that, uh, that you're expecting specific types of notes, you might mention that a, um, a notes field might be for a call log with, uh, with uh, people on your sales list that you're uh, calling so that so that users know a little bit about uh, what types of data to enter. Uh, and be succinct if uh, the, all the stuff has to get read to the user, so the more text you have, uh, the longer it's going to take them to move around and, and kind of get their bearings. Right. So I'm going to do a quick demo, and hopefully we can uh, hear some of the audio through my headset. Um, so I've got two, uh, two applications here. They're, they're both the same, uh, with the exception that there is not any accessibility hints on this first one. And um, I'll, I'll just go through, I'll show you how to add some access, accessibility text, and then I'll also um, show you what it sounds like with and without the text uh, to give the users a little bit better idea of what's going on. Um, here I've selected the item uh, field, and under the view menu, down near the bottom, underneath where the inspector is, there's an access accessibility inspector. And so if I take this item field, 
click on the label widget. Looks like a drop down, but it's not not really. It's sort of a button drop down hybrid. And if I click on the item uh, label, it's now associated uh, with this text field. If um, if I take and change this text to item number. This is uh, reflected here, so we can see the difference between the label and the field itself. And so the same goes for titles would be used for, say, container, where I, I don't necessarily have a, a label associated with that. Again, open up the accessibility inspector. So I'll type product image. And in this case, I'm going to also add a calculated uh, value here to put in the contents of the description. So we're going to say that this product image and then after, if you access this uh, container, it will actually read uh, the contents of whatever is in the description field. All right. So, silly cowboy on a dog is the description. And so, I'm going to turn, I'll do it once as, um, Via command uh, via the interface, and there's a keyboard shortcut um, to turn this on as well, which is function F5 or function command F5. There's a different keyboard shortcut under Windows 7. Um, Welcome to Mac OS 10. So hopefully. Hopefully you can hear a little bit of that. And so if I place the cursor. We're currently on a group. Cowboy dog ride or pet costume. Content selected item number text. So the what gets read first is the contents of the field and then a description of the. Text field inside of a group. Sorry, that's the help test text that comes a little bit later. So if I had actually entered uh, help text, that would have been read in place of uh, you're currently on the text field inside a group. Um, let's just move this up so that you can kind of see. So even if you can't hear, you should be able to see this text uh, being read. Um, so in the case of so in the case of a field that we didn't have an accessibility label, if we put the cursor in, it just it gives you a generic combo tech box. So you don't as a as a visually impaired user, you don't know. Um, what this field is for, all you know is that there's some sort of combo box, which in FileMaker speak is a drop drop down uh, list. Um, so, um, let's look at the the actual the one where I've done a little bit more prep work to get um, some of the text here. I'm going to rely mostly on this text here uh, since the talking over the, the computer, uh, talking over Siri is a little uh, uh, challenging. Um, so here uh, there are um, sort of some hidden keyboard shortcuts for users to access things like uh, pop-up menus, uh, drop-down lists. Uh, so if you imagine closing your eyes and listening to this all day, it would be sort of, even with all these uh, hints, it would be difficult to, to use uh, the software. But the, without, without it, it's, you would be completely lost. Um, so let's go back to presentation. Let me turn off. 
Um, so in buried in FileMaker's help text, uh, there are some guidelines for uh, composing the accessibility text because there's um, some very specific ways which they are intended to be used. Uh, and it's slightly different. I had mentioned tooltips earlier, but it, it actually is a little bit different than how you would compose a tooltip. Um, the uh, the tooltip might might be specifically more along the lines of the help text, but um, from what I can tell, I think you want to give a little bit more direction in help text than than you would generally do in a tooltip. Um, so, just obviously, you want to you want to provide some sort of um, equivalent text uh, to what's on the layout um, for labels. Typically, it's going to be the same as what's on the label. Um, it can be helpful for those who are um, who do have some sight, um, but are, uh, are 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 a little bit challenged in reading things on screen. Having slightly different text can also help them um, sort of uh, figure out what they're reading. It can give us a little bit of context to some things that they might not be able to make out so so well. And the the screen reader is fairly verbose, so obviously you want to avoid redundancy. Um, and uh, you, so you want to be as short as possible, but provide enough, um, enough uh, guidance for your user uh, so that they can, they can use it. Uh, so, and also be, be sure to keep in mind your context. Um, if you're in a portal, it's, it's probably fairly helpful to, to let the user know that you're looking at uh, related records. Um, and include punctuation. Uh, the screen readers often will use those as cues as uh, how to read back text. So if there's something that they're unfamiliar with, um, it, can, it can help a lot in um, understanding um, the, the text if you use punctuation just like you're writing uh, full sentences. Um, and if an image is on layout has text, make sure that you include the text. Um, that would obviously be difficult for anything that would be a, uh, a dynamic image so that if you have a different image on every um, on the product screen for example it would uh, be difficult to do that um, you might do it in something where you have a, a description for the um, for the image and that way the the people actually entering the data not you as a developer might be giving a little bit of context uh, for other users, um, but in terms of making sure that you have uh, text in the accessibility hints of images, it's for like static layout elements that if you use uh, static images for buttons that contain text for navigation, be sure and, and include that. Um, and then uh, don't, don't label anything that's not um, actually going to be used and interacted with by the user. And um, FileMaker made a, a note about that you can specify objects outside the tab controller portal as accessibility labels and vice versa so that you can have, really what this just means is that you can have um, a label associated with a field that is anywhere else on the layout. It can be inside a tab. It can be nested in five tabs deep. It can be anywhere else. Um, it wouldn't always make a lot of sense visually to, to arrange uh, your layout that way, but if the need arises where you've got some kind of um, sort of contrived portal within a tab, within a tab, and have some sort of labels above the tab control, uh, that would still work uh, the way uh, FileMaker 12 is working. I think that actually comes, um, there's, I assume that that has some, uh, something to do with, in layout mode, you can access uh, labels and fields and group objects regardless of whether they're in a object or uh, a tab control so it seems like something got decoupled there and it might have been specifically for this um, and and uh, drop-down menus uh, are not uh, they 
the drop-down items in a in a list will not be read. Um, however, uh, if you have a type ahead, the text will be read that is selected. Um, so if the if it's a very short list, uh, the user can use type ahead to sort of give them an idea of um, of what they're what's in the in the drop down box. The alternative to that is that there actually is uh, the pop-up menu. So the difference between drop-down uh, drop lists and pop-up menus, pop-up menus, uh, the accessibility of voice, voiceover and um, narrator will both read uh, everything that is in the pop-up menu. Um, and there, um, so if you have uh, a layout that's specifically built for um, people who are or have trouble seeing, then you definitely want to lean towards those pop-up menus uh, rather than drop-down lists. Both will work, but it's it's a little bit easier with the pop-up menu. Um, calendar items on OS 10. Um, when the calendar pops up, it will uh, it will read the text once you've selected it, but it is a little bit um, it will not read. Uh, so if I move the cursor to the 24th of April, it will not actually read what day that's on. So in Windows, this works perfectly, but under OS 10, it doesn't. So if your if your users are primarily OS 10 and they have um, a date, it it probably is just best to let them type in the date directly. It's going to be a lot easier for them to to do that than to try to navigate the calendar pop-up uh, and not get any audio feedback on it. Um, so uh, here are some uh, additional resources about accessibility. Uh, FileMaker has a page. They, this, uh, this link to this page is a list of how they comply with uh, the 508 um, Section 508 amendment to the 1973 Rehabilitation Act, um, and it gives um, little hints of where they comply and where they don't. It's mostly in layout mode and some developer features that they don't have full compatibility. But from the user perspective, um, it's it's fairly robust. Um, and then OS 10 and iOS, there's just links to pages where they have a little bit more about the features that are specific to those platforms and Windows 7 as well. And um, there's a quick little summary on uh, Wikipedia about uh, what the what the accessibility, um, the Section 508 amendment uh, means. And we kind of went over there. It's essentially, it's that most of the, the text uh, and interactive elements in a web page or application are able to be read and access uh, by the screen reader and by keyboard shortcuts. Um, so that's about it. Um, and just so you can connect with IT Solutions, info at itsolutions-inc.com, or follow us on Twitter, Philly FileMaker, and our blog, phillyfilemaker.org. And here are the other FM Academy members. And uh, we will take questions now. If uh... all right, we have uh, we have some questions, uh, and uh, also feel free to continue submitting questions uh, as we go through these. Uh, if we have either not answered your question or not answered it uh, to your satisfaction, we will have uh, an opportunity for you know clarifications on questions. And also, uh, if any question requires much more detail than uh, than this uh, forum provides, we will. Uh, post a follow-up uh, response on the blog, uh, the uh, FM Academy blog, when we do post the post uh, webinar uh, blog post. So a lot of posts in that sentence. Uh, a lot of posts. All right. So uh, first question: uh, Is there any function or plugin to track the finger or cursor position to know if the user wants to move to another layout? I guess not. Not that I'm aware of. Um, 
that would be what their cursor position is on a specific layout, like uh, what pixel or point position it is in. in yeah, I don't. Um, not that. Not that I know. Um, and uh, the messages uh, you are in a combo box are in English. Is it possible to convert these to Portuguese? Uh, I guess then the follow up question: Are these are FileMaker messages? These, uh, if if you have your operating system set up as a as a, another language, it would use whatever yes. the, the current language of the operating system is. So, um, so yes, yeah. gotcha. Okay. Um, how would the visually impaired user navigate the layout? How will the developer protect data? I use there's two questions really. Uh, how would the developer protect data in a field from being deleted? Um, it you would uh, they would use it. They have the same type of access as any other user. Uh, they just navigate slightly differently. There are keyboard sh shortcuts to um, move through. Obviously, tabbing works. Um, in a pop-up menu, and this is just under OS 10, Windows 7 will have something different, but control option space will activate a pop-up menu. Um, they're the only way to really protect a, um, a field from uh, getting the data cleared is just to either completely lock it down or um, any of the traditional ways that you would do that. If you um, you can make fields that are not um, accessible via keyboard can also be read. Let me see. There's kind of a trick to it. I'm trying to see um, if I can do that. So so here, this this uh, bad dog pet store is the name of the company, and um, it is not. Um, I can't actually enter the, the text into um, in this field, but if uh, it will be read back just as any other option, uh, any other field. Same thing with the, the, the company title and the email address. Um, so that, that would only be um, if, if, so the short answer is that any other just, just as you would uh, have security rules around what data can be entered and cleared, it works the same way for visually impaired users. Is the reading of the accessibility info activated by a user tabbing through the fields or objects? Uh, yes, that is one way to do it. That is not, um, that is not the only way. Uh, there is a um, a keyboard shortcut to sort of jump out of the fields. And on iOS, they actually can just uh, tap objects and it will become active. And then at that point, they have an option. So say if it's a button, they can tap it once. The screen reader will read uh, what the text is uh, and any hints that you add. Uh, they would have to double tap it in order to activate the button. Um, under the desktop platforms, it's a little bit different. You can um, you can navigate to something before you actually activate it. So in the case of the buttons here, um, it would you can either tab tab to it if they're uh, in the tab order, or um, there's a way to sort of move the cursor uh, to a layout object, and then it will be read. Great. Um, if a field is formatted as a checkbox. Are the choices read, and if a checkbox is actually checked, how is that handled by the voice? That is uh, that is actually read. Um, it. I'm not sure in which order. I think it will list each item and say whether it's checked or unchecked. Um, there, there's actually a little bit different. There's a way to navigate through each one of the choices one by one for a checkbox, and then there's also sort of a it's, it's a way of sort of drilling down into the information for the user. So if you, I think, I believe if you initially select a checkbox, it will read only the items that are selected. And then there's also an option to go item by item, which would allow them to check or uncheck. And it will also read whether or not they are activated or not. Um, so it's a little bit more involved than it's very easy for us to see a checkbox and just see a list and see which ones are checked and which ones are not. It's a little bit more tedious 
to get that, that information back uh, via the screen reader. Um, um, in order to work with this, we must have accessibility enabled first in the operating system. Then FileMaker will recognize it, correct? Correct. Okay, gotcha. So that is turned on globally at the LS level. Yeah. And so then when FileMaker launches, it recognizes that that's on. Yeah. So for for OS 10 here, we have um, it, VoiceOver would have to be turned on uh, before this actually starts happening. And then um, under under Windows 7, under East Access Center, you would go to use this com uh, computer without a display, turn on narrator, and hit OK or apply. And then at that point, it would start reading the text. And there, I believe for both of these, for OS 10, there's a keyboard shortcut to quickly activate and deactivate. And then I, I assume that there's also similar functionality in Windows 7, which for those who are um, who are not who are partially sighted, it, 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 they might go in and out depending on when it's useful. So is that anything like the sticky keys? Hold, tap, yeah, tap, actually, if, tap, if you, if you, hit, if you hit shift <laughs> five times in a row, and it's actually uh, it's actually sorry. both on. Uh, I think it's for both both Windows and OS ten. I think that's a standard somewhere. Oh, okay. that, like that's that's one way to access it. Um, does FMP accessibility allow for voice navigation to fields or links? Um, I assume oh, I didn't go to a specific. And, and voice control is not included as as part of this, uh, from as far as I know. Uh, so, I, if I understand the question correctly, then no. Okay. Um, is there a function to know if accessibility is turned on? I guess a, a get function. Uh, I don't believe there there is within FileMaker. It would just be. Um, it, it's something just computer by computer. I don't think that um, I don't think there's a way to know. There might be on OS 10. There might be an Apple scripts or something that you could run to tell you. But I don't within FileMaker. There's nothing native uh, that I know of. And uh, are there plugins that support the generation of a speech recording for an email message instead of a typed entry? Okay, so that's a totally different topic. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean. I assume there there may be. I, I don't know. <laughs> so that is speech know. recognition in FileMaker via plugin, uh, possibly. I don't know. Yeah, um, we. I mean, we could certainly follow up. On yeah, that. I think I think that if the if the goal there is to send uh, voice uh, audio to a user who is visually impaired. Yep. They probably are using the accessibility features in their OS, so would be able to read their email via uh, narrator or uh, voiceover. We just got a good comment from uh, from Jay, who uh, who says that iOS allows dictation into FileMaker Go fields. So yes, assuming okay. assuming you have an iPhone right. 4S, or, right? And exactly. I'm not sure. I guess 4S. I assume that works on an iPad 3. I don't believe it works on an iPad 2 or earlier. Gotcha. Very good. Um, so that um, I mean that concludes the Q and A. Uh, we'll uh, we'll save these questions uh, and uh, follow up on anything that we did not give enough detail on uh, on the uh, blog post. Um, again, uh, I uh, do, you have, do you have anything to add before? I, no. Okay. Uh, thank you all for. Um, oh, we have one more uh, question. Uh, if there isn't any function to know if accessibility is turned on. It's not possible to have specific layout for these people. I guess is so. The, the question is: is you know, is there a function for that? And maybe there's a, maybe there's a, a plugin capability for that. But we'll, we'll look into it. So yeah, it's, it's possible. Answer. I think that likely it, it wouldn't be the same situation where you would have with I, uh, with iOS doing FileMaker Go, where you would just automatically take them to the layout. It would be likely tied to a specific user's login. Right, so that you have specific users that are in need of this functionality, and so if you've got, if you maintain a staff table or or some kind of um, way to track your users that way, that you would say when person Y logs in that they they want to use these layouts. Gotcha.
All right, and thank you uh, again, everyone who joined us for all 15 of the uh, of the webinars. You uh, certainly uh, are, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you certainly uh, are patient, uh, and uh, thank you uh, for uh, for everyone's assistance with this. Uh, we will resume regular webinars, I believe, in June. Uh, but uh, don't quote me on that. We will definitely get uh, the next webinar announcement on the website as soon as possible. And uh, thank you all, uh, and uh, goodbye.